All right, everybody, today we're talking about Jewel Knights. So we got the updated card effect for Evangeline, we got the crest for Salome, and a little bit more information about, you know, kind of an idea of where we're gonna go with these premium deck sets and also an idea of what Raging Four might be like. I'm just kind of getting this out of the way as soon as I can. I am going to get my wisdom teeth extracted today, so I'm a little bit nervous about that. And uh, I'm probably gonna take a little bit of a break from doing these types of things, so, uh, when we do get Raging Form, it might be a bit before I'm ready to talk about it, like literally ready to talk about it. But um, for now, let's get the Jewel Knight stuff out of the way while I'm still able to talk and get right into it. So starting off, we're going to go into the Errata for Evangeline, which is if you're Vanguard's grade three leading Jewel Knight Salome with Limit Break, and you did not get an imaginary gift this fight, you can discard cards with a sum of grade three or more, stride this unit from face down, then you turn a Jewel Knight card in your G zone face up, and you get two imaginary gift force, and you get the Salome Crest. The act ability is still the same, uh, flip something face up in your G zone. If you have a heart with Jewel Knight and you have three or more rear guards with Jewel Knights, all of your Jewel Knights get 3K for each face up, Evangeline in your G zone. Theoretically, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to flip Evangeline for the cost and then for the second skill, flip another Evangeline so that your whole board of Jewel Knights gets 6K. And this is also, again, you can stride while your opponent is at grade two, which is kind of nutso. Unfortunately, it's kind of mid in regards to being able to pressure your opponent because um, the crest doesn't really do much to help Salome either. So going into the crest, uh, after you acquire it from Evangeline, if your heart is Salome with the Limit Break ability, your Climax Jewel Knight Evangeline gets the, all the abilities of your heart. And when the first time you would pay the cost for the ability of Salome, you could reduce the Counterblast cost by two. And the original power of your Grade 3 Limit Break becomes 13k. Your Limit Break abilities are active even if you have three or less damage. What I mean by it doesn't really help with, you know, aggressiveness, I guess you could say, of the deck is because Salome's Limit Break is just power and a crit. There's not much going on with that, but I do like that at least it's helping you ramp up your G-Zone and you can still stride your opponents at Grade 2. So it's still better, but there's still like this conflict between is this better than Alt Mile with Goblade? At least Goblade lets you multi-attack and search out Ashley. Or is this better because you can stride into this, flip a bunch of G units face up, and you can still search Ashley for free just during the main phase. So Salome's original skill, which is limit break when it attacks. If the number of rearguards you have a Jewel Knight is four or more, this gets 2k and a crit. Like I said, for a limit break, this is really not that crazy. But the second skill is act, kind of blast two cards with Jewel Knight in its name, search your deck for up to one card with Jewel Knight, call it to a rearguard circle, shuffle your deck. So that being said, you can call any Jewel Knight you want, including Ashley. Um, and the Counterblast cost is free for the first time you do it. Um, so if you wanted to call two Jewel Knights, it's just Counterblast 2, call two Jewel Knights, which is okay. I just hate the fact that you have to run cards with Jewel Knight in its name, forcing you to run like a full Jewel Knight deck. So hopefully we'll get a lot of good support cards, but it hurts when you have a lot of like non-Jewel Knight cards like your triggers, which, you know, you get two damage checks and, you know, you're kind of stuck with using Salome's skill once for your search. So, but that's what Ashley is for. So my overall thoughts about this is I really wish they did something where if Evangeline was able to attack or if like whenever you called a Jewel Knight, it got some type of power, like just to make it so that it is a little more implied that this is going to be a really big offensive turn, even if you can't multi-attack. Um, I guess you technically can multi-attack if you pull out an Ashley, like I said, but that's where, you know, it comes down to how the deck is built and pre-constructed because as of right now, we still don't know what the main contents outside of triggers and the G zone. So speaking of the G zone, we're just going to kind of jump into that real quick segue. Starting off, we got Harmonix Messiah, like as before with the Cecilia one, which is really helpful. So this is kind of proving that all three are going to get a Harmonix Messiah, which is great for players that want to jump right into premium for the first time. You get a $50, $60 product with a Harmonix Messiah already included. Harmonix Messiah itself is like a $60 card, so this is a really good balance because it's like buy a Harmonix Messiah, get a deck free. Comes with the four Evangeline, that's kind of obvious because you need to flip like 
two copies face up the first stride and I don't know if you're gonna flip another one later, but maybe if you do decide that you wanna stride into Evangeline again, you can, you know, have those three face up to give 9K to your board. We got a Elugius or Elugius something. I think that's what it's called. Uh, that's still a good tech card in my opinion, just, you know, situation wise. Uh, you have three things on the board. You draw three, call another three, get another marker. Um, if you're, you're getting a weird situation with your hand, so that's still a good card. We got one copy of the GB8, which is really good. So again, this is proving that we're probably gonna get GB8s for all three of them, because we got the GB8 for the Musketeer Stride deck second as well. Uh, the GB8 lets you basically just search your deck for like five things, call it, and then the Vanguard gets a crit. So again, multi-tacking, finisher, yada yada. Being able to search out two Ashleys off that is actually kind of funny. Then the big talking point here is Crystal Luster Dragon. So Crystal Luster was like, always the finisher for any Royal Paladin deck. Whatever Royal Paladin deck you build, Crystal Luster was like basically your finisher. It copies your heart skill, which in this case, it's not gonna be good to clone Salome with the Limp Break, but if you still run the V Salome or Ashley as a backup ride, you can ride that, and it's still a really good offensive unit to have for a G unit. It also has Generation Break 3. If you have three or more units with grade two or greater, your opponent has to guard with three at a time when they're guarding from their hand. That's the part where it applies a lot of pressure for your opponent when it comes to the guarding. So Crystal Luster bumped up a bunch after we got all that Royal Paladin support um, with Jewel Knights. So it's safe to say that having the Crystal Luster in there is nice. It kind of sad that there's only two just because you know, maybe you want to stride Crystal Luster twice. I feel like that's like the only stride you want to go into after you go into Evangeline, but at least it comes with it. I'm really happy about that. The Saint Twin Sword is also really good. That's a great finisher just because for each face up card in your G zone, anything that's called from the deck gets 5k for each face up card. So after you do your full Evangeline and your Crystal Luster, you're probably going to add like 30k to every card you call from the deck that turn. And it also has the effect where when it swings, you can search your deck for up to two grade twos, call them to rear, um, and then you just go from there because, you know, that's a that's a bunch of power to give to two grade two units. We got two copies of Alt Mile. Um, that's a kind of a silly card, but I think it's still good if you're not out of Counter Blast because it's really simple. You just stride it, flip a copy of Alt Mile face up, search for a grade two, give it 5k. No Counter Blast involved. It's just a free search. Um, your front row does get 3k, but I still feel like it's going to be your flip fodder um, because Twin Sword, Elogius, and Crystal Luster all require you to flip G units face up. Alt Mile is probably going to be your flip targets. We got one copy of Maskell uh, and one copy of the Laser Dragon, whose name I forget. Um, both of those cards basically do the same thing, uh, except Maskell flips up a G unit face or G Guardian face up for 10k. The Laser Guard Dragon um, just gets 5k shield if you have a grade two. So I feel like you probably end up dropping the Laser Guard for another Maskell. We got another copy of the G Guardian where it gets 10k shield if you have two grade twos. The most recent G Guardian that came from, uh, I believe, the last premium collection, it gives a rear guard 10k shield, and when that rear guard intercepts, you can kind of blast Soul Blast to turn it into a PG. It's an okay card, but at least having the option to PG is nice to have, but I do feel like it kind of sucks that unless your blasters or alt mile or some specific like sub genre of royal paladin you're not going to have any good g guardian support so especially because blasters and alfred literally have a g guard that searches any card out from your deck and you can search a pg and call to the guardian circle so but it sucks that it's blaster alfred restricted so unfortunately jewel knights don't have a very good g guardian pull but you got to work with what you got and then you got one copy of that Kray Elemental thing. I'm still kind of indifferent about it, but I guess because all of these other G Guardians are so rear guard reliant, it is nice to be able to have a card where it just gets a bunch of shield, regardless if you have a board or not, and it kind of depends on how much hand your opponent has. So it's, it's there. So now we kind of summarized everything that was revealed. Here are my overall thoughts. I like the updates a lot. I think it's good. I think I still would want to run the Limit Break. I still want to get the Crest. I still want to stride while my opponent's at grade two, and I do like that I can get a free Ashley right from the get-go. Being able to do all those crazy early game combos where you're just filling a board is still really helpful, especially when cards like Christine exist. Right now, Christine's a little expensive. I really, really hope that they reprint it in the stride deck set so that people don't have to worry about trying to spend a bunch of money to get this key card. But I think the fact that you can call any Jewel Knight for free 
and you pull out that Ashley, you can swing with Ashley and then use Ashley's skill to pull out a Christine or a Sword Me if you want to do Sword Me to Christine. Uh, pull out a Christine and then that lets you search out another Ashley, which then lets you do another attack, which you then theoretically could search out another Christine and do it again. And you know, you can, depending on how much soul you have, you can just kind of keep it going. So I think Christine's going to be a really key card for that early game while your opponent's at grade two, depending on how it's going, if they get damage checks or not. So there's a, a lot of early, early game poking you could do with the Jewel Knight deck, especially when you can give 6k to your entire board that turn. Your Vanguard also having a crit can be a little bit of pressure if your opponent doesn't have a PG or doesn't want to guard it. And then, you know, you just get a crit in your triple drive, your opponent's taking three damage all of a sudden. So I still think this is better uh, as opposed to Goblade, just on paper. I do like uh, Goblade gives you a free search, but this feels more supportive for the field since you're trying to build a field for Jewel Knight anyways. So another key card I think is gonna be really important here is unfortunately Sword Me. You can't really give a board 6K if you don't have a board to give it to. And the only Jewel Knights that really help you build a board are cards like Christine and Sword Me. So Sword Me helps you build a board during the main phase and then you kind of work with what you got from there. It is good that at least you can search any Jewel Knight you want with the crest for free. But I have a feeling you're going to be running a full deck of Jewel Knights as much as you can. And you're going to be counter blasting to Jewel Knights just to be able to do that search. So we'll see what the main deck contents are. We already know what the triggers are. The triggers are basically the same ones that are from all the premium collections, plus draw PGs, plus heal guardians. Kind of similar to what we saw with the Knight Rose and Harry stride deck set, except instead of stand triggers, we're actually just getting full crit draw heal ratios with their respective nation OT. So we are getting our Martinoa in this as well. But that's pretty much it. Those are my thoughts about the Salome deck. I think this deck is still gonna be fun. Uh, I'm still waiting to see Raging Form because that seems to be the only multi-attack focused stride deck set that we're gonna get so far. So I really wanna see how the crest works with the G unit and how it lets you go into Raging Form again. And that's gonna be a really fun one to, you know, go into and talk about but after i finish with getting all my my little wisdom teeth out then we'll talk about it after that just a quick reminder you can pick up the premium deck sets on 50 cards for about 60 bucks so that's for musketeers jewel knights and revengers you can also pick up the bundle where you get all three of the premium deck sets together for 175 so you get a nice little five dollar discount you can also use code nexus to get five percent off at checkout so when you're going ahead and pre-ordering your premium deck set, make sure to use code Nexus and get that nice little discount. It's a great support to the channel and it's a great support to 50 cards as a vendor. They have a bunch of singles, play mats, play set bundles. Uh, you can also pick up your divines bundles if you wanna pick up uh, your nation splits. So be sure to look into those as well if you're looking to update your decks for the divines meta that's coming up as well. But that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys always coming out and listening to my little talks. Um, I'm looking forward to talking about Raging Form when that comes out, but like I said, we're gonna have to wait till I'm healed. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.